India is one of the fastest growing economies and now ranks as the fourth largest economy of the world. One of the key drivers of our economy is the rail transportation network. Indian Railways is one of the largest rail networks in the world under single management. The core growth of Indian economy like power, coal mining, steel, cement production, fertilizer and petroleum have great dependence on railways. To supplement the rapid development Railways have identified its high-density freight routes of Golden Quadrilateral and its diagonals for line capacity enhancement. The Golden Quadrilateral and its diagonals, which are just 16% of rail network, carry 58% of total freight traffic. A momentous decision was taken by the Government of India in 2005 to segregate the freight and passenger business and to construct dedicated freight corridors for movement of freight trains. In the year 2006, Dedicated Freight Corridor Corporation of India Limited DFCCIL was established and registered as a special purpose vehicle under the Companies Act 1957. The DFC project is a unique project. It has achieved landmarks at every level of planning, engineering, design and technology. This dedicated freight corridor that we have planned on eastern side as well as western side is going to change this scene completely because most of our freight which is on eastern side will shift to eastern dedicated freight corridor and the freight of container traffic which is going to JNPT port will shift to western freight corridor. Both these corridors will be of total length of 3,300 kilometers, costing around 82,000 crore. The prime objectives for building these dedicated freight corridors are to create additional rail infrastructure to cater to increased transport demand as well as to reduce unit cost of transportation. DFC will provide seamless end-to-end -end solution to the customers and segregate freight infrastructure for focused approach on both passenger and freight business of railways. The Eastern Corridor has a route length of 1839 kilometers and stretches from Ludhiana in Punjab to Dankuni in West Bengal. The Eastern Corridor will cater to the enhanced movement of coal to power plants, steel, petroleum, fertilizer and food grains etc. The Western Corridor is from JNPT in Mumbai to Dadri in Uttar Pradesh, covering a distance of 1,500 kilometers. The Western Corridor will cater to India's strategy of transformation to a global export hub. The Western Corridor will also help in domestic movement of industrial production from Western India to the northern part of the country through containers. To accrue the benefits of DFC, the Government of India has started the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor Corporation of India, which will industrialize the area along the western DFC and bring in 100 billion US dollars investment to the region. To augment the future development of next generation infrastructure, DFC is one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects being undertaken by railways since independence. DFC uses some of the most technologically innovative methods to achieve its futuristic goals. The project is being funded from the multinational agencies like World Bank and Chaika. The planning, execution and construction is also being done by multinational companies. They are coming from across the world and they are participating, they are executing the project to the best possible technical specifications available around the world. Thus, dedicated freight corridor, once completed, will be one of the best examples of Make in India mission, which is the dream of our Honorable Prime Minister of India. DFC is the pioneer in operation of double stack containers on electrified routes. 
Dedicated freight corridor envisages electric double stack long haul operation with trailing loads of 15,000 tons and container capacity of 400 per train, which will be a first in the world. The axle load has been increased to 32.5 tons. DFC will be a high speed freight corridor, increasing the maximum speed from 75 at present to 100 kilometers per hour. For the first time in railway history, the mobile radio communication and GSM based tracking of trains will be used. All these features make it one of the safest rail systems in our country. With an efficient, cost effective and lean organization, DFC will reduce the operation cost to half as compared to the present railway system. The Eastern and the Western freight corridors pass through 9 states, 60 districts and 2,500 villages. Availability of land holds the key for faster construction of dedicated freight corridors. DFC will use about 6,000 hectares of available railway land and acquire 10,750 hectares of land. Further, the main cities and towns have been bypassed to avoid any inconvenience to the population due to land acquisition and other issues. Apart from compensation, the rehabilitation package offered by DFC is unique in a way that it provides for the cost of resettlement and rebuilding of assets of affected people. The DFC will prove to be a game changer because of the basic reasons that we are providing speedy movement of the freight. If we look at the present scenario of the Indian Railways, the speed of the freight train has been only 25 kilometers an hour which will be raised to average speed of 70 km an hour after construction of dedicated freight corridor with a maximum speed of 100 km an hour. The DFC had undertaken a detailed study on greenhouse emission to develop a long-term low-carbon roadmap which will enable DFC to generate lower carbon footprint and also adopt more energy efficient and carbon friendly technologies, processes and practices. The DFC project has followed green guidelines to the maximum possible extent and has used technologies which save energy and resources as much as possible. The flow of uninterrupted finance is the key for this kind of mega project. The project, the DFC project, is very important for uh, helping India to get its act together for infrastructure to help sustain and to accelerate economic growth. This project connects the north, the west and the east uh, will connect the industries with raw materials and, and commodities and by doing so it will improve the transport system, it will lower transport costs. Uh, the bank is very happy to assist with that. Uh, it will have enormous environmental benefits as well. It will take off cargo goods from the roads to the rails. So environmental benefits are there, clearly. The DFCC has made foolproof arrangements for timely and uninterrupted flow of finance as the Eastern Corridor is financed by World Bank and the entire funding for Western DFC is provided by Japan, JICA. JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency, is supporting the Western Corridor from uh, Delhi down to Mumbai, about 1,500 kilometers. In Japan, we have a large corridor uh, from Tokyo to Osaka, but this is about uh, 500 kilometers only. DFC, East Corridor and Western Corridor, will be uh, the backbone of the Indian economy. We are inviting Japanese private sectors to make more investment along this corridor. The DFCC project is likely to be a key driver of Indian economy and a game changer project. The DFC project will reduce the transit time to one third and will bring new state-of-the-art terminals for improved customer service. DFC will become an important lifeline to our economic growth. DFC Building the Nation DFC Carrying India to a Higher Growth Path